Mark 2.0 is back at it. Uh, we welcome Jimmy Ace Lewis, and I'm going to throw it over to Brian to start this thing out. Brian, take it away. Jimmy, thanks for being here. How you doing today, buddy? Thanks Good for having me. You. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I'm doing a lot great. Of fun. Yeah, it's a treat to have you. Thank you. So, uh, you know, we're really interested in in, in uh, you know actors and acting and stuff like that. We're really uh, looking for new people on the rise. You're looking really good to us. I mean. Uh, you know, uh, let me, I guess we'll start with the basics, you know, what, when did you want to get into acting, bro? Well, it's a, it's a good question. So really when I was, when I was little, my mom and I used to do like stage plays together in our church and things like that. And, you know, I was like three or four and then I, I kept doing those. And then I eventually made my way into a community theater and things like that. And I, I think the moment that it was like, holy cow, there's something magical about performance was I was doing a play of the Christmas Carol. And I remember the set was this humongous set and I was playing a schoolboy in it. I was around eight or nine, I think. And, you know, we had like a snow machine and we had guys on stilts and crazy costumes. And, you know, you know, if you're familiar with the Christmas story um, or Christmas Carol, um, you know, there's there's all these like ghost characters and stuff. And it was just really well done. And I was just really enamored by this sort of performance and stepping onto a stage, whether that be, you know, film or TV. And, and I was really just fascinated that, hey, there's there's a story we can tell here and we can make people feel things and, and whatnot. And uh, so that was big. And then I, I kept doing more theater and I've done West Side Story and Narnia, just different plays. And I um, throughout that, I really found film and TV to be more of my lane because I could go back and watch it. I could share it with people. I could, you know, things like that. So So for me, film and TV became more and more interesting to me. And um, that that basically started with um, local short films that I was doing, and I found those. And uh, my buddies and I used to make YouTube videos, and we would make sketch comedies and things like that. And um, our YouTube channel was called DFPI TV. It's still up. We haven't posted in a while, but um, that sort of thing really got the ball rolling. Of like, wow, this is fun. I like this. And so that, of course, kind of just kept segueing into more and more on camera work. So that was the. That's the origin of uh, my passion for, uh, for for acting, I guess. It seems like you've taken all the right steps as far as starting out. So uh, we're really, uh, you know, uh, it's a treat to be a part of your, uh, hope, you know, we can be a part of your ride and help promote you. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk about your Power Rangers uh, fan film. Uh, what is it? Power Rangers uh, Legacy, a fan yeah. film where you played the Black uh, Power Ranger. We want to hear all about that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look so uh, basically, um, I had never seen Power Rangers before I did Power Rangers Legacy. So uh, for those watching, this is the helmet that I wore, the Black Ranger helmet, and they measured my head and everything to make sure it fit. So it was really fun um, for me to step into something that I that I actually knew almost nothing about. So I did a lot of research and I watched a lot of Power Rangers and, you know, the sort of movements that Power Rangers do, because you have to do those things. Sure. And um and I watched that and then Power Rangers is based on a Japanese show. So I watched that. So I, I did a lot of research with it and um, was able to bring some martial arts into it. But it was it was very fun. We had days when we were shooting on the mountain in uh, Tennessee and it was 20 degrees and that was cold. Oof. And then there were days that it was 120 degrees when we went back to do our stuff in the suit. So it was it was it was um, it had challenges for sure. I'm really good friends with everybody on that project and we're actually about to do the sequel to it um, in June. So that'll be- How long nice. did that take you guys beginning to end? Well, it was interesting because I was cast in, shortly after we shot the Stalker, I was cast in 2019 and I think it was around fall of 2019. And we started shooting all of our like out of the suit stuff because they were raising money so that they could buy these suits. Cause this is these, these helmets, I think were like 300 bucks a pop or something. I don't know what he spent on them, but they were, they were relatively expensive. And so um, he had to buy the suits and the costumes. And so he was raising money for that. And while we were um, so, so 2019 and then 2020, of course, the pandemic, of course it, it inevitably slowed our production down. And we, we still shot in the summer of 2020, we did the in, in suit stuff. And then we had to do some reshoots and our Megazord stuff in uh, 2021. And I helped them make the Megazord suit. And I actually wore the Megazord suit in the uh, in, in the fan film um, 
because uh, he, he didn't have a guy that could do it. And I said, well, I can take a crack at it. And I did. Um, and for what we had, you know, spray paint and cardboard, we, we, we made it happen one way or the other. But, um, but that led to, it's funny, that sort of led to me um, be, be, being on a Power Rangers audio drama called, well, simply called Power Rangers, the audio drama. And that's all over, you know, podcasts and YouTube and things like that. And uh, people really enjoy that. So it's the Power Rangers thing has been really fun. And of course, as I, as I told you guys uh, earlier, um, I got to work with Jason Font, who was on Power Rangers Time Force. He's in Stalker Part 2. So been kind of somewhat full circle, I guess, or interesting at the very least. Wow. Wow. You've been on a heck of a ride. <laughs> I guess. So, how, so how much so how much time all, did this all cover, really? Um, for the Power Rangers Legacy, uh, mm -hmm. that was on and off. Um, end of 2019 through, we released it in the summer of 2021. Um, but it's not like we were shooting the whole time. We did, you know, a week here, a weekend there. So it was just kind of here and there when we were filming, um, you know, scheduling and things like that in, in that case. Yeah. Were you doing other stuff in between? It sounds like this is the project you enjoyed working on the most so far. Is that true or is there something else? Well, I wouldn't say that that one was, well, I would say it was very enjoyable and very fun and everyone became friends and, um, you know, I became good friends with everybody who played the putties to the uh, other ranger actors because we were in our suits the whole time. So it was, it was kind of a, it was a big bonding experience. We were staying in an Airbnb. I mean, there's a ton of funny stories there of, of you know, one time my, my buddy, Andrew and I, um, we were watching TV in the Air Airbnb. He played the Red Ranger. And there's like a knock on the door. It's like 3 a.m. And we're thinking, who in the world's knocking on our door at 3 a.m.? It's an Airbnb. It's, we're not used to the city. It was a pizza delivery guy. He thought we ordered a pizza, but we didn't. It was just funny things like that. We just were joking about and laughing about on set. And in other words, it, it was a bonding experience. It was fun. And uh, but but I would say as far as my heart and like my my major like uh, favorite project would probably be the stalker films because my mom and I uh, wrote those together and uh, produced them and cast them and everything. So we, we did a lot of behind the scenes work with those making props and casting. And, you know, the second one, we just watched the uh, rough cut of it and it looks really good. So that should be coming out probably within the next couple months. But uh, that first you one did that was, with your mom. then. Yeah. Yeah. My mom mm -hmm. uh, wanted to get wow. into the film industry and, and was talking to me so Wow. Where were you born? Let me back up. Where are you yeah, born, yeah. Jimmy? Sure. I was born in upstate New York, small town called Binghamton. And then I, I lived in an even smaller town called Harpersville outside of Binghamton, which is basically uh, farm country. So uh, so farm country. And then we end up moving to South Carolina and then eventually Georgia. But uh, mm, so you had some free time. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. And I was homeschooled. So I had a lot of free time, but, uh, but good. Uh, you had a good imagination then, you know, yeah. develop that, you know, yeah, I mean, I was, what, yeah. so what, what's the deal with your mom and dad? Where were they born? Well, a very similar spot. Um, they were born in, in upstate New York and uh, my dad uh, used to pave roads and driveways and he was, he has own paving business. And then um, they, they felt led to move to the Southeast and, uh, and we did. And I, I really continued with the acting thing and everything more so in the Southeast. I've gotten to do some, 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 some of my better projects in the Southeast. Um, I do travel a lot, but a lot of my work is mostly in the Southeast. That is interesting. So, so it was your mom who actually kind of uh, worked even with you and nurtured what you wanted to do. Uh, so it sounds like from a really young age, you wanted to get into all this kind of stuff, performing mm -hmm. in some way. Did she influence that? What was she like? I would say encouraged. <laughs> My mom is a very artistic soul as well. I mean, she used to do paintings and things like that. And there so, you, you know, I used to, we used to get the neighborhood kids together and we would uh, come up with a story and like perform it in front of everyone's parents or whatever. You know, we used to do things like that. You know, I, every kid has an imagination. I was always in the woods sort of playing out movies in my mind and whatnot. And, uh, you know, just, just those types of things. And my mom, my mom was always encouraging, always supportive. And, um, so when she came to me, um, and, and had talked about wanting to do this film, you know, we, we had talked about it and she took elements from her real life when she was younger, she was stalked and, uh, she took those and we made a movie around it basically. 
and uh and, and it was you know the movie was it was challenged bring that to life and uh and we we did it you know and I'm, I'm i'm very proud of that and i think that's why ultimately it's my favorite project is because it's something my mom and i got to do together and my sister is also a makeup artist so she was involved and uh, my dad worked on it as well a little bit here and there but we hired a crew you know it wasn't just a family project we hired probably about 20 20 people on the crew and of course the wonderful cast including matthew and uh, my buddy Troy Froman, who was on Saved by the Bell and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So it was a it was a fun it was a fun uh, it was a fun project, um, especially the second one. Actually, the second one was even more fun because we knew more about the film uh, production side of things. And we we outdid a lot of things that we did and, and learned. So it was uh, it was a fun experience for sure. That's so awesome. And that's that that's in production or done? We, so that one's totally done. Um, it's funny. I actually just recorded. Um, there's a there's a phrase called Foley, which is basically just a fancy word for sound effects. I just re was recording a couple of sound effects that I was sending to our editor because there's a thing where a guy drops a crowbar in the movie. And I was like, Man, I really would like that sound of that crowbar hitting the ground. And I, I just took a crowbar and recorded it. But, and I sent it to the editor. And so that's in post production. It should be coming out soon. Um, the rough cut looks really good. And uh, yeah, I got actually the guy that played the Red Ranger on Power Rangers Legacy. I got him to give me some music to use in it. And he's a very talented musician named Andrew Villar. So he's an actor, stuntman and a musician. So he's a cool guy. Wow. We'll have to and talk you're to him. you're a musician Mark. too. A little <laughs> bit. That. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's actually funny. I, I started playing guitar when I was, when I was, you know, really little. I was probably three or four. And, and um, at my church, they used to... Um, Put me up with the praise team i wasn't plugged into anything but they would have me kind of strum along and stuff and so i used to uh be really into that and i still i still play the guitar i still sing a little bit i haven't recorded any music or anything necessarily yet but it's something that i could see myself doing i like a lot of rock music i like punk i like uh some indie music some rock pops just things like that anything around the rock genre sort of sort of deal you know, i'm gonna have a journey shirt on right now but a journey you know, yeah there we go yeah. we love journey oh yeah oh yeah i think my favorite band of all time is probably the ramones um but um but i just i love music music of all kind i collect music i've got cassette tapes i've got eight tracks i've got vinyls i've got uh i just i just like music i get a lot of these at thrift stores and stuff like that <laughs> i wish i would have i wish i would have kept all my old stuff go ahead mark i think i skipped one no we're good now uh what about talk about uh hidden heroes that oh, was yeah, in yeah. Uh, South Carolina. And that was kind of, that reminded yeah. me so much of like a candid camera type thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Um, it was interesting. I was doing West Side Story during the daytime. Or no, I'm sorry. At nighttime, I was doing West Side Story, you know, months and months of singing, dancing, and acting. And then in the daytime, my agent had called and told me, hey, um, well, emailed. And she said, there's this TV show. It's going to be on CBS. It's for kids. It's like a hidden camera type of thing. They're like, it's kind of like punked, but like in a positive way for kids. I was like, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do it. And, uh, and, and it was a fun project. It was so different than what, you know, hidden camera. You just don't, sure. there's no real, uh, I would say training. There's no real like textbook for that necessarily to read or whatever. It's, it's its own thing because when you're doing hidden camera, some people get kind of mad at the scenario and, we had people, I remember, I think there was a couple of people that even like cursed us out or, or threatened to take us outside when, when we were doing that, uh, the, the caffeine bully episode. Um, that was, uh, that was fun and scary. But uh, ultimately, when we told them we were on a hidden camera show, they're like, they're cool that they just had a sign release for them. And, uh, and then they got to be on TV. So it was cool. And they, I was only supposed to do one episode. But then they called me back for more. And fortunately, one of the ones they called me back for, they cut my lines out. And then one of the ones that they called me back for, I don't believe it aired in America or it might not have aired at all. I did the work though. And it was a lot of fun. So sure. Cool. It's funny because I was on this walk the plank. This, yeah. I, this is a Disney uh, show. And it's so funny because I went over to Paramount studios to audition. Mm -hmm. You write something down. You say, yeah. which friend are you going to, are you going to prank? So I had my friend Dave come out and it was, he's like 300 pounds. They had me do the show. I totally punked Disney. Because they had me do the show, and the guy had three, he's 300 pounds. What he had to do, oh. we're, in a, we're in a supermarket over there yeah. in the valley in L.A., and he has yeah. to grab a crab out of the, you know, uh, water, out of the crab, where the mm -hmm. crabs are. 
or yeah. lobster, I should say. Okay. Yeah, lobster. He had no, he's 300 pounds. He had no emotion whatsoever. They couldn't even use it. So oh, we go man. upstairs to the office of the supermarket. Disney pays us each a hundred bucks and we're on our way. She goes, well. did you not tell him that this was a, they're like, you can't tell him anything. They're like, did you not tell him that this was a prank show? I'm like, you told me, I couldn't tell him it was anything. So I'm just like, hey, we're going to go do shopping. We'll get paid $100. <laughs> we totally funked Disney. Lo That's and great. behold, they recasted the whole thing. They had like a really? little girl on there doing it instead of us. Isn't that something? We I mean, I don't, bucks. I don't know how it was done back then, but but what, they gave us earpieces to wear. We I don't know if got you got those. Cash too. Oh, really? Okay. No, no earpieces whatsoever. Okay. It was That was kind of weird because, you know, we had our producer in the back in the walkie talkie saying okay now say this okay now say this you know it was it was interesting Maybe, no because there was a kid asking my friend all the stuff mm, and i was just wow. there making a i was just there like guiding him to the lobster it was awesome yeah that's great <laughs> no wonder you know martial arts and stuff this this whole business is crazy Can be. <laughs> and you do stunts right <laughs> i i do i do stunts primarily in the form of like my own stunts and i've gotten to coordinate a few things um here and there i've written some fight scenes for the stalker one and two and um i i wrote my own fight scenes in the power rangers legacy and uh, i've done some things like that and performed stunts i've taken a lot of hits taken a lot of kicks Given some, taking some. Dude, the Power Rangers moves is no joke. None at it all. It must not have been easy. I mean, yeah, those it, original stories, those people were just straight acrobats. You know it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and the, the actors in the movie, I thought, well, the whole movie overall, you know, was like a better, but, you know, they could really not really match what those original people on TV even did. You know, mm -hmm. they were just like, um, those people just like, oh, we just defy gravity, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I actually have a pilot coming up where I would be working with one of the original stunt doubles from Power Rangers. Um, she was the stunt double for the Yellow Ranger. And I, I'm supposed to be doing a pilot with her, but I haven't heard anything about the pilot in a minute. But uh, mm. I'll have to ask her about some stories. I yeah. can't wait to see this. Where can I see this now? Where can we all go and see this, dude? Uh, see what now? The Power uh, Rangers? Yes, yes. Um, so Power Rangers Legacy, if you just type mm -hmm. in Power Rangers Legacy fan film or whatever on I'll YouTube. I'll put the link in the description. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, everyone, everyone involved was really cool. Was How long has that been out? Sorry, I didn't, um, I didn't really know about that till now. No, it's you're good. Um, that, yeah. that came out in the summer of 2021. Okay. So we've been... Uh, We've Couple been uh, years. Yeah, actually, what's funny is I had a guy in uh, Arkansas, a really, really nice guy, messaged me on my uh, Facebook. I had no idea what he was talking about. He goes, hey, man, are you doing any conventions? Are you doing anything? I'd really love to to meet you. And I was like, oh, sure, man. Um, you know, I was kind of like curious, you know, what project are you talking about? What do you, uh, you know, I didn't really think of what um, the right thing to ask. But but he had said, oh, so I, I saw you in Power Rangers Legacy. I was like, oh, wow, cool. So what he said, he goes, I really want an autograph. I was like, all right, um, sure. I'll, I'll see if I can send you a picture or something. And then he goes, okay, um, I'm going to send you a Funko Pop box and I want you to sign it. I was like, okay. I mean, it was just a fan film, but do you want me to sign it? Sure. And then he said, I also want you to, uh, I'm going to make custom artwork. I actually have one. It's in my, it's in the other room, but um, he had custom artwork made with my face on the, uh, on the, on the black Ranger suit. And then he had me sign it and he let me keep one or two of them. So it, it's interesting how you can do something you don't know that people, you don't always think that hey people are watching you know oh, what i mean yeah yeah how jimmy let me ask you this since you so you you knew nothing going in and that's cool as shit. Mm -hmm. but since then you've seen like a fan base come forward so how much have you seen since then well that's interesting i didn't expect anyone to reach out from these i thought okay you know we're doing a, a cool fan film for youtube and 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 maybe people will dig it or whatever but I've seen a lot of people from both the Power Rangers audio drama and the Power Rangers legacy, like DM me and reach <laughs> out to me and tell me, oh my gosh, like we like you guys so much and, and we love this film or we love this uh, audio drama or whatever. And it's, it's like, you know, you don't understand. It's like, help me through my work day or it's, I watched it. And then I, it's just like, wow, you mean, how do you say it? You know, you of course say thank you and you embrace it but it's just so interesting hearing from people and how yeah. you're working. it's because they're old men like me so here's how <laughs> jimmy say since i was a little boy i was watching william shatner for instance and he was like splunk, splunk. and you're like oh man 
you just saw what what they wanted to do. And, you know, I swear we should let him call Chris and, you know, Leilani, uh, Mark, because these these Comic-Con things, dude, those people are there. They are. And they they go, want yeah, the Star to Wars. talk to the Black Ring, I swear. <laughs> and and the, it's like the fan that watched it be very small and get a little better and then a little better and then a little better. That's your diehard fan. You know, they're, they're with right. you now. Oh, yeah. And like they did you see the movie at all? The, the motion picture? The 2017 movie? I think it is. Yeah, no, I, I, um, that was my first experience with anything Power Rangers. Mm, good, nice, good. Um, and I really liked the characters in it. I thought the characters were really fleshed out. I really liked, uh, you know, the music and things like that. And I, I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was fun. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it. It, it was an Americanized thing by then, but I, I yeah. again, I thought it finally kind of got got the look and and feel and the kind of the older kid vibe that it deserved. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it, it wasn't for the for the toddlers anymore. You know, her running around punching pillows. Mm-hmm. So you you know you you done martial arts? Did you did you get a little like your mom put you in that and made you go once a week or what happened? Uh, no. So what had happened was, uh, this is interesting actually. So before I booked uh, Power Rangers Legacy, I actually auditioned for the current Power Rangers show being made by Hasbro, Nickelodeon and all that, like the really big, legit one. Oh, wow. And so yeah, I, I didn't get it, but I, I've auditioned wow. for them uh, two different times now. And I, uh, I was trying out some moves that someone had showed me. And then I, uh, I hurt my leg a little bit. Mm. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to take some real classes. Yeah. And um, this was in 2018, I want to say. I, I started taking Taekwondo and um, I haven't stopped. Right now, um, I still train and practice pretty much every day. I do a lot of sword work and nunchuck work. Uh, weapons mm. are always my favorite. It's just fun. Do something kind of cool and flashy with weapons. And it's not easy. It took me a long time to, to, to get it right. Is there anything that's worth doing is going to is going to take uh, discipline and time, but it uh, it looks cool when you get it done. That's the thing that people don't always realize is um, they think you can just I, I did, too. I thought you just pick up a sword and do something cool with it. It wasn't until I really got into it and whacked myself in the head a couple of times um, that I really realized that, hey, it's going to take time. But when that time when after that time, it's totally going to be worth it. Nice. Oh, well, I had a friend that trained with, I think they were called the Seattle Knights. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, they had those big broad swords. And I'm like, you're crazy. You yeah. You're crazy. <laughs> He's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any free time? What do you do? Well, my free time, um, I mostly, I spend time with my dog. I have a lab beagle. She's, uh, she's my best friend. I also like to go like thrifting and yard sale finding, find a lot of props from our movies that way too. It's just uh, it's just kind of fun to to look at old stuff and and random stuff that you don't really see that often. Um, I actually found a Super Nintendo today for ten dollars, so that was kind of cool. Nice. Um, what else? Uh, I like writing, so I wrote this book earlier this year. Called oh Angela wow! Heritage. So this is on Amazon and it's on uh, nice. Barnes and Noble. And so we took some photos in it. Sorry, there's some photos and it. it's probably hard to see, but. But it's available, and we're going to be turning this into our next film after Stalker oh, Two. Oh wow! But outside of that, you know, writing is fun, martial arts is fun. I like to work out a lot. Um, I try to work out a few times a week at least, and um, I go to a lot of church. I go to young adults groups at church. I go to different churches. Um, I'm big on church. Um, I am a Christian. It's something that I that I uh, spend a lot of time with. I spend a lot of time at church, and the whole community of, of, of my church is great. So that's kind of. Uh, that's kind of what I do a lot. I love movies too, of course. I mean, who who can be in the film industry and not love movies and TV shows? What are some of your favorite movies and TV shows growing up? Oh man, um, so the Sam Raimi Spider Man trilogy was big when I was a kid. I loved those. Um, there was a cartoon show called Teen Titans I really liked. My mom, when I was a kid, showed me a movie called oh, Tron. I love and Teen Titans. Yeah, the I original one was, was was a big part of my childhood, and uh, I met Tara Strong, who voiced Raven. That was cool. And, uh, but yeah, Teen Titans. And I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, Star Wars, of course. Um, the Dark Knight films, Heath Ledger. That was uh, oh, yeah. a magnetic performance that I will never forget. One of the first times I really remember witnessing a performance that I was just like, wow, this is acting. Like, this mm-hmm. is, you know, from, from, from then, I it just, 
you know, I, I love I love movies. It's oh, 1990 Ninja Turtles movie. I love that movie. Oh, uh, that was a classic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dark Man. I mean, there's there's all kinds of movies that that I really love. And, and uh, definitely Tron is one of them, though. I remember I was listening to the interview you guys did with Matthew and uh, he mentioned Tron. And I was like, well, I guess I'll mention oh, Tron. Too. Tron. <laughs> That was wow. That was that was like legendary. I remember yeah. that when I was a child. I mean, that's just one yeah. of those theater experiences that were just unavailable anywhere mm-hmm. else. That was before everything, you know. And sure, you yeah. know, where so digital, digital media came to life. We're like, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My mom showed me Tron. Um, we were uh, she homeschooled me, and and there was a day that. She said, okay, we're going to take today off and we're going to watch a couple movies. One of them was The Goonies and one of them was Tron. So, nice. Indiana Jones, That's another awesome. one. I love Indiana Jones. Yeah. Obviously, mm-hmm. Star Wars. You know, I, I just, the classics, Back to the Future. I mean, you got to love those, you know? Sure. You know, we need to go Las Vegas because Mark Wahlberg, he's a Christian and really? he's building this whole empire of Hollywood, too, in That's Las cool. Vegas. Yeah. And, I love that. You know, he's just, you know, I, I, he's yeah. just, God doesn't save saints, you know, he saves sinners, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I've made my mistakes, but I'm going to give back, you know, so he wants to go to Sin City and build this, this whole nice, good thing, you know, and make away from all that evil, you know, mm-hmm. and I, that's, I that's think fantastic. you belong there, bro. <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll get to work with him one day. I, I heard that yeah. he's doing like mostly like faith-based content now. And I saw him in a film where nice. he played, I think it was a priest or something. He was really good in that. Mel Gibson, somewhere. right? Yeah. 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 That's yeah, a Gibson that's film, right. dude. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't Mel wait Gibson. to see what he does next too. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, you know, I just watched uh, for the first time ever, I saw the Mad Max movies. Mm, Great. Especially Mad Max 2. I think that was my favorite one. That was a good one. Yes. Mad Max (laughs) was very independent, but the (laughs) second one was like, I think it was just called The Road Warrior. Oh my gosh. That was some of, that was Gibson at his very best, man. Mm -hmm. That was a young Gibson, man. And you're like, wow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no wonder he got that. but yeah you should get involved with him too because you yeah. know his faith-based oh, you yeah. know you know uh, uh, what can you say about gibson he just he just went against the grain and did it anyway yeah. you know and i love everything he does i do i do you remind yeah. me a lot of of him because sure. you know you know sure. you're a young good looking guy and you're just getting your hands in every looking everything you know and something's gonna trigger and uh don't forget about yeah. us okay take us yeah. along with you Good jimmy you for the ride <laughs> and I'm you're a lot up. like so, a lot of our other guests they always have a good mom behind it uh yeah. the difference with you is your mom's producing stuff with you how awesome yeah. is that yeah no that's great I, I it's great i mean we even co-wrote the book together i mean it's it's cool having um creative people that you can uh in your family not only not only that, that support you but also have similar thoughts dreams and passions and things was it hard to get the stalker on all these platforms because we got a friend uh bill and he's been getting his movies on all these different platforms Tubi, amazon you name it how hard was it for you guys to get on there well um you know we went with a distributor our distributor is called indie rights and they're a really good distributor for independent films because of course we're an independent film and um when you're making an independent film the making of it can be very difficult because budget is always tight and you know just we didn't have it you know with a tighter budget well i think we shot the thing collectively in seven days we shot in five days and then we had two days where we came back and did there's a whole scene where matthew and we're all in the garage tied up matthew scared me in that scene and i've known the guy for two or three years um he did everything every single take with matthew there was something different he would do and um and he really he really went for it and uh, even the after credits, all the he, he really went for it. But, but as far as getting on the streaming goes, it was really helpful for us to have our distributor. Um, not all films do. Some films self-distribute and they can still find success that way. But uh, our distributor really helped us kind of open those doors. It's kind of like me with, with my agent. Um, they get me opportunities that I just, I can't get into those rooms. You know what I mean? By myself. Nice. That's awesome. You know, I was going to ask you, uh, 
if you're going to stick with this acting thing or go to music, but now that I know you, it's like you do so many things. It almost seems like a silly question. What, what, what are your goals? What are your goals right now? Well, my goals right now is uh, obviously keep performing. I'd love to work with some of my, uh, my, my favorite actors, just actors that I admire in general. Um, but, but right now is honestly just, I want to get to the second part of my book out, turn that into a film, um, continue the acting, um, keep that as my main focal point, my main thing. Um, but I definitely would love to do something with music some point in the next maybe four or five years. And, um, yeah, definitely just, just keep making movies, keep working with great people. Um, it's a really fun industry because I've traveled to everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but a lot of places in the United States from, well, New York, Tennessee, Florida, even Wilmington. Missouri, and Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Wilmington. Yeah, yeah, Wilmington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Wilmington, yeah. Um, they shot Ninja Turtles there. Um, but uh, but uh, there's so many cool places that you get to go that I just don't think there's, um, I, just to define my life, I think is always going to have to be as an actor. I don't think that I could really find the same level of fulfillment in another profession for me personally. What are you going to do actually to satisfy your music uh, itch? Um, you know, probably something with singing your guitar. I mean, there, again, there's a lot of avenues to get music out there and people have it on Spotify and they've got, you know, CD companies and, you know, there's, there's indie ways to get your music out there. Um, you know, I don't have a band or anything like that. I've got friends that do music. I think at some point I'm going to get that, um, I'm going to figure it out. I didn't know anything about writing books, you know, and then I, I looked it up, Googled, uh, tried to, I knew friends that, that had done it and I asked for their advice and some of them didn't really say much. Some of them did. Some of them just pointed me to YouTube videos. And so I, well, my mom and I, we just figured it out. You know what I mean? So same with music, whenever that becomes a thing, I'm just going to have to, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out and um, talk to some people that know more about it than I do. And, uh, and, and, and cause, cause there's a lot of learning that, that, uh, you can always do in life. Wow. Sounds like a good plan to me. I can't wait to see uh legacy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, what else do we, do you have any more questions, Mark? No, but, uh, make sure that you promote your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to quickly, um, plug a few things. Sure. So yeah, go watch power Rangers legacy on YouTube. Very easy. We'll put it in the description. Yeah. And then uh, Power Rangers, the audio drama, anywhere where podcasts or YouTube is found. Um, then also check out, of course, The Stalker. It's free on Amazon, Tubi, Roku, and I think a few others. Totally free to watch. Um, if you've got an hour, just, just watch it. Watch till the end. There's an after credit scene that teases the next one. Obviously, Stalker 2 is coming out. I had an even better experience filming that one. We knew more about it. We had an even, uh, I, I would say, an even more talented team behind us. We knew exactly what we wanted, and we we stuck to our guns even more. And I really think we outdid ourselves. And I'm very proud of that film. So, of course, you can follow me on social media. Um, I'm on Instagram at Jimmy Ace Actor 17. Very uh, easy to find me. I don't know if there's, any, I don't think there's anyone else with a similar handle. So uh, I'll put it in the description too. Yes, thank you, thank you, and. Uh, Everybody, uh, make sure to uh, follow this wonderful podcast. <laughs> well, thank you for that. And everybody, make sure you uh, subscribe and like and leave a nice review for uh, Jimmy on his uh, adventures. And uh, we really want to thank you for being here, man. I'm yes. uh, happy to be a part of your early career because uh, oh, man, I'm uh, I'm expecting great things just talking to you. You're a heck of a talented kid. Let me tell you, you what. You really are. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. And and I, you know, my. My dad always taught me the, the value of hard work and my mom always taught me to be a creative soul and embrace who I am. So I think that I couldn't have asked for a better family life. And um, one last thing I want to plug, of course, I've already mentioned sure. it, but my book. Oh, your book, yes. Make sure um, anybody who's interested in hardcover, it's in digital, it's in soft cover, it's on Amazon, it's on uh, Barnes & Noble online. Enter the Power Surge is the name of it. I'm really passionate about it. It's a character-driven superhero piece. And I think that um, everyone will enjoy it that reads it. And I uh, uh, just want to thank you guys again for having me on. This was, uh, this was a real treat. Oh, it's our pleasure. Pleasure to have you, Jimmy. Everybody get over to Amazon and support Jimmy. Get over to YouTube and uh, <clears throat> watch those videos and uh, tell him how great he is. Thanks thank for being here us. today.
Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, guys.